your like insurance payment is not so like the bank also provides the insurance for them. Yeah, right. I, I expected like, him to what, go. What else? He says that your checking account is overdrawn. I'm like, you know, the meter that where you parked your car is expired. <laughs> like, what, what, why yeah. do you know uh, your all island this? on Animal Crossing only has one star? <laughs> I just want to let you know. Yeah. <laughs> Also, uh, your fire extinguishers are not up to code. Yeah, and you're, it's like this one banker just in charge of everything. Your left testicle isn't making boys anymore. I just uh, thought I'd run through my list here. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because drugs. I'm your host, No Illusions, and Heath will be unable to join us tonight. He's off this weekend for his birthday, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I am a genius, Noah. Did you know I'm a genius I and didn't... can do anything <laughs> at all times? <laughs> No, you know, I was you've you've hidden it well, but now I see what you mean, and uh, <laughs> and I believe you. And also joining us tonight is friend of the show, host of the Opening Arguments podcast, Serious Inquiries Only, and Philosophers in Space, and man twice as good at having kids as Eli Thomas Smith. Thomas, welcome <laughs> back, sir. Hey, thanks for having me and making me watch a two-hour fucking piece of shit. Yeah, <laughs> you guys are my best friends. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so there should be a happy ending at the end of one of these, at the very least, for all of us. <laughs> to be fair, it was going to be a three-hour Bollywood movie oh my God. without I subtitles. You know, I have a personal philosophy as I will never turn down invites to do this show, but I might have. If you're like, it's a three-hour Bollywood movie. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't have told Eli that. Uh, we're going to yeah, test I that next time. I might have been like, hey, Thomas. my kid uh, hospital. Yeah. I would have made something up. I just Coronavirus? <laughs> Give me one second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my kid got hit by a car, so I can't. <laughs> I actually had another kid, and 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 it's you know it passed away. I I'm, I'm I just need to mourn. All right, so tell us, Thomas, what two hour movie will we be breaking down today? We are breaking down Flywheel, a movie about a lifelong scumbag who decides to be a Christian for five minutes, and bam! Literally everything in his life and his business turns incredible. <laughs> That's it. That's, That's it. the whole goddamn thing. Yeah. <laughs> And as if it weren't depressing enough, it's also the story of Alex Kendrick's career, right? Alex yep. Kendrick was like a douchebag media guy at a church center, made this movie, and now he's a multimillionaire. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's a, it's, a, it's a tragedy, but not intentionally. So, Eli, <laughs> how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the media empire of the Kendrick brothers, but you liked their original stuff before they... <laughs> sold out and learned how to focus a camera, you <laughs> will love this movie. Nothing I have ever done or seen has made me more confident than this movie. The fact <laughs> that the Kendrick brothers turned this meandering wander around a used car lot into, again, a multi-million dollar mainstream media empire God. means I can do literally anything. I can fly! <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's one way to look at it. But the other way is really depressing. Like, this is the best we could do, huh? Just this. <laughs> Look, every time I come on the show, I think I make the same joke. It's not really a joke. When are we turning Christian? Yeah. <laughs> Just let's start making the movies. Oh. It'd be so much better. Yes. Almost so by default. Like, yeah, almost we couldn't be... I mean, we could be better really at being worse, be worse. If, yeah. if if we want it. Well, I own um, more than one microphone, so well, there you already. go. Right. Already, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, okay. So, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Sure, I'll do best worst understanding of business. <laughs> <laughs> so he's sell. I, you know, I'll get into it at the time, but he's selling cars for ripoff prices. He's just scamming, like doubling the prices of, of used cars, and he somehow behind $32,000 on, yeah. on a rent payment? <laughs> like, it's unclear. He owes somehow $32,000 of rent on his piece of shit lot that it is, there's no possibility it's that much. And then he dramatically lowers prices, as we'll see, and it's a ghost town. Just not everybody, it turns out the customers were just there for the ripoff process. They're like, hey, you should, this scumbag, I, look, I, you could pay 
a fair rate for a car. Yeah, yeah, yeah boring. Everyone does that. <laughs> Go check out this scumbag. Just watch him rip you off. It's entertainment. It's like, you know, it's like Eli does a magic show. You go there, you watch the process <laughs> of him being a scumbag. And that's part of the product. You know, the, the fucking movie, they, they never give him like a cocaine habit or a gambling addiction or a really expensive grover. Like there's never any reason why he's so far in debt. The whole beginning of the movie is, well, here's a couple thousand, here's a couple grand, there's a couple thousand. Yeah, he's rolling in it. Yeah. <laughs> so fucking stupid. Okay, so I was going to go with best, worst, titular illusion. Okay, I know that there is a flywheel in this movie. <laughs> right? But that's it. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, so, so we, I keep wondering how they're going to use the flywheel in the movie. But it turns out that it's just like, yeah, without a flywheel, the car wouldn't go. So <laughs> Jesus is like your flywheel. The movie could have been called like fucking timing belt, right? Like just yeah. car part. It didn't fucking matter. Oh, Gasoline. And that scene where they decide to like hash out why this movie is called Flywheel. <laughs> <laughs> Worth the price of admission. Which brings me to mine, which is best worst waiting for acting. Oh God. So, <laughs> nobody involved in this movie can act. But apparently the person shooting the movie was told he was going to get some star quality <laughs> acting because every scene ends with the camera zooming in ready yeah. for the great performance that it expects. <laughs> but it's just the dead doughy faces of Alex Kendrick and his real fucking family who can't even make happy and sad faces on fucking command. No, nope. it's in, it's like the cuts for this movie or we're on some form of radio delay. Is that this movie? <laughs> 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 and there's no such thing as like editing. So there's no. just, once you shoot it, you're just stuck with it. Oh, yeah. No, it's so good. There's so many times when the camera's zooming in on somebody. And I'm just going like, is he going to smile? Did you think he was going to smile? <laughs> is he going to frown? Nothing. <laughs> Are you waiting for him to say cut? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to make a quick movie and kick off our multi-million dollar mainstream media movie empire. Uh, but it's only going to take a minute. We'll be back after that uh, with all the background noise that is. Flywheel. Hey, uh, excuse me, Alex. You get those tapes converted for the preacher yet? Yeah, when I get around to it. Hey, hey, man, I'm just asking a question. What's the matter with you? Oh, uh, don't get him started. He got cheated at a used car lot today, and he's been like this all day. Oh, well, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, man. I just don't understand why there isn't an honest, God-fearing used car salesman out there who would just, like, make what he should. Dude, we've been over this. You can't just ask commission. Hey, if he loved Jesus, he would be fine making $500 a car. You know what, guys? This, this is a movie. What? About a used car lot? A used car lot, but where they love Jesus. Yeah, and, and, and he gives money back to everyone he cheated. Exactly, yeah. People will love this thing. We could start a whole movie company based on that. Damn, we really could. Yeah, yeah. And if we end up making a bunch of movies, we can only take just fair profits from what they make and we'll use the rest to help people. I mean, buy ourselves a jet. Yeah, yeah it's more like, like it. I want a jumbo jet. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back, and we're going to open up on some pretty sweet Commodore Amiga fonts. <laughs> Woo! We knew we were in for some good shit when we saw these, right? How did they manage a low-res iDVD intro? Is there, <laughs> is there a free-er version of iDVD that doesn't quite <laughs> give you the HD lettering? Yeah, I think they, they made a PowerPoint presentation and then filmed their monitor with the camera. Oh, oh there yep, you go. Yep. All right. I just, I looked down and I saw that this movie is like an hour and 58 minutes or whatever. And the first thing I wrote in my notes is like, the Kendricks need a hard 90 minute cap. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. A 90 minute, you know, is generous too. I mean, oh, yeah. That's, yeah. That's when you turn, just turn the power off on the, the whole <laughs> thing. Like 90 minutes, like you're done. Yeah, they don't get 90 minutes and credits or anything. No. <laughs> the the music is so bad. I, oh. I, I uh, it's just two chords where they're just like dun 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 
<laughs> and it's just like a church, you know, music director is just so fucking proud of this nonstop, boring, generic piano score. It never ends. It tricks you. It's it, like it it goes to a new scene, right? Like mm -hmm. it's just so we're doing credits forever. Goes to a scene, and I was like, oh, thank God. Oh, oh, I'm finally done with this. And then like they hit the bridge of the song. Yep. <laughs> like, Hold on, we're not done. And this goes on for so long that I think it's technically a music video. Like I'm, I'm pretty <laughs> sure we opened with a four minute music video. Yeah, no, so, and we're seeing a flywheel in the background. We're listening to those <laughs> same 16 fucking repeating notes for a hundred years. You know, you were really generous with the 16. I have that at about nine different notes. Oh, 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 sure. saying, it was the same notes over and over again, but they repeated yeah. the entire thing every 16 notes. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. It was just like, it was like one of those little samples on a keyboard where you're supposed yeah. to do the lead over it, right? The whole <laughs> thing was done on a Casio. The entire... Yeah. yeah. I gotta hate it. And and it wasn't even a Casio they owned. They just went to the Kmart and played around with the one that was there. <laughs> they took their one microphone that I have copious <laughs> notes on that I will try to not. And they just took that into the Best Buy and like, hey, just I'll hold the mic right here. And you yeah, just pluck, out, you exactly, know, exactly. pluck out literally the entire score for my two hour film. All right. Well, we had time for 16 notes before they kicked us out, but that's fine. That's good. <laughs> that's fine. That's, that's okay good. because the second hour of the movie will just be me holding one synth note and then <laughs> I'll, I'll change it to another. I'll add one more synth note to change it up and then just repeat that for 60 minutes. Okay, we're good. <laughs> All right, so and what we're going to see while, while this stanza is playing ad infinitum is a guy buying a classic car that they did not have permission to put more than one thirteenth of one mile on, right? <laughs> like, this car is going to be, like, the star of the show, but we're constantly going to see people off screen saying, like, yeah, pull it up over here because <laughs> they did not have permission to drive the motherfucker. Oh. And if you're wondering how this movie is going to be shot, the very first scene is two characters walking from opposite sides of the frame <laughs> yeah. to awkwardly shake hands in the center. <laughs> it's it's the opposite of mise en scène. It's it's mise en cyanide, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, that's when he buys a car. However, I was entirely distracted by the morbidly obese black lab. Oh, <laughs> he was a chonk. <laughs> when Anna Anna was sitting next to me for this and she said, that's not a chocolate lab. That's a too much chocolate lab. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we cut to this used car lot in Albany, Georgia. And at this point, the video quality, oh. I didn't know what I was getting into. I, you know, <laughs> I complain every time, but I see in the notes, flywheel, it's on Amazon. I was like, oh, thank God, it's on Amazon. And what I think Eli means by that is I have to go to Amazon, give them money <laughs> to buy a film, the, the entire quality of which, the film quality could be described as Tom from MySpace's profile pic. Is the <laughs> video quality. Yep. The whole video is that. Yep. God. Oh, Fucking, I'll never get this two ninety nine back. I actually one day I will, Eli. One day I will come for you. <laughs> <laughs> actually, this is how I'm saving up for one of my kids to go to college. It's just I'm gonna do these gams throughout you know the eighteen years or whatever, and then I'll come with a bill for Eli. Like here's how for much. All, I yeah, there you go. For yeah. all the pure flicks and Prime movie subscriptions. Yes. Well, and the mental distress and whatnot that we put right, in. Yeah. yeah. And one of my kids can go to junior college, and that's yeah. it. Yeah. There you go. So, yeah, so we see him bringing in his classic car. It's a 1958 Triumph TR3, by the way, in case anybody's curious. Those sound like car words. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Well, they use a bunch of car words here. You know, they go all car on us. Now, I want to point out that this movie takes place in Albany, Georgia, which is, I don't know, like 100 miles from me, like not maybe not even quite that. And also... I believe there was a time during the summer when Albany, Georgia had the highest per capita incidence of COVID-19 in the world. Uh, so it was really fucking bad there for a very long time. Are you going to go on the tour and see all the hot spots of the film? <laughs> 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 yeah, you well, we call that driving down rural route seven, but yes. Yeah. And here's the 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 car the used car lot that mysteriously charges thirty two thousand dollars of rent yeah. uh, over <laughs> I, I don't know, a month. I don't know how it worked. All right, so now we've got us we've got to watch him sell a used car to somebody. We have to watch him like rip off a customer because that is everything about the first act of this movie. 
<laughs> it's either him ripping off a customer or somebody saying, man, you sure do rip off customers. Um, I need, I need to talk. <laughs> I need to talk about the other two sales yeah. associates. Do you? Yep. Do you? Do you? Alex, yep. his thing. I'm not a fit man, and neither is Alex Kendrick. But the other two actors are sentient food in a children's movie fat, and I cannot handle it. I just wrote down, how does this dealership make any money when the salesmen keep eating the cars? Oh, my God. <laughs> and I did, that was before I knew anything about the story or anything. Going oh, on. I have them down as Tweedledee and Tweedledum throughout. Yeah. <laughs> When he walks in, the first guy says to him, man, you are the king of cheese. And I wrote in my notes, no, man, you are the king of cheese. I can't promise you much. Uh, they do make the main character look like an Olympian, though. You they know, do. Like maybe yeah. that's his plan. Yeah. He is, he's not, you know, he's not fit or anything, but compared to his coworkers. And by the way, one other coworker, we will never learn anything about what his job is, what he does. It's a black man who just comes on camera every 25 minutes or so. And in this movie, so that means he does it about 10, 12 times. <laughs> and he just shakes his head like, mm, you know, like disapproving. And, and then he'll go, he'll go like, white boys or something like that. He'll, yeah, he'll draw exactly. attention to his blackness in some way. Yeah. yeah. Right. I wanted the racializing of that character to like scale up throughout the movie so that by the last scene, he's just like, you know, I'm 15 times more likely to be shot by a police officer while I'm unarmed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sam. <laughs> you know what the salesman look like? Do you remember that movie, Akira, the anime, where the guy at the end, he like bubbles out into a monster? It was like if he stopped halfway through and started to sell used cars. That's what the other salesman <laughs> at this dealership look like. And, and by the way, if you're all, my age and you need a slightly older reference think of the last act of uh big trouble in little china sure so, yeah yes yeah, same same basic principle i'm in the sweet spot where i don't get either <laughs> <laughs> my only reference is the two remember the guinness motorcycle twins it's yes. just those guys mm -hmm. so there, we're in the at the used car lot and his family comes in uh, the main character's family comes in so he can ignore them and not love them a bit right <laughs> and she does the the wife comes in and does the pregnant lady lean, which I appreciate because she could have just been as fat as everyone else in the movie. So she lets us know. <laughs> I thought she was just as fat as everybody in the movie <laughs> for a while. Yeah, we'll get to it. There's more later. Never mind. Yeah. Pause on that. So she is pregnant, but I didn't know that at this point. I can see why you might have missed it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, she just blended in. So they do this incredibly lazy bit, right? Where his kid comes in and, and, and leaves him a picture, but he's on the phone, so he doesn't have time. And then he's just, the family leaves to go get him lunch, and he just starts crumbling up all the papers on his desk, uh -huh. including the picture from his son. Yeah, okay, what's the thinking there? Because I get it. You're like, oh, busy guy. He's stressed at work. He's looking at paper. He registers them. Like, he looks at the paper, crumples up, looks at the paper. What does he think he just crumpled up? Right? <laughs> like, oh, man, my... My fat coworker's doing crayon drawings for me. <laughs> God damn it. So tired of this shit. Get to work. Bernie, I said I needed the paperwork for this Honda, not a hand-drawn picture of one. <laughs> yeah, that's like a line that's like sign here. He's like, well, this will work. I guess I'll... Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So now we get one of the many outdoor shots of the film where they do absolutely nothing at all about the noise of the fucking highway right <laughs> next to this goddamn lot they're filming in. Oh, just the entire time. I can't take living in Georgia no more. <laughs> just in the background. <laughs> also, one of the fat car... So this is him. This scene never matters, but I will say one of the fat co-workers is sitting like leaning against the car and eating, but we never see what he's eating, so I wrote in my notes, I'm pretty sure Vince is eating little pieces of the car he's <laughs> That's <laughs> what I'm saying. That, I think we've cracked why this business isn't working. Yeah, right. They're, they're, you know, you're eating your own supply there. <laughs> yeah, I also love this, too, because I have this as just seen that they never finished doing. Like, this was, I think this whole movie was like, we'll do a video journal of the process of writing a movie 
And then they're like, wait, Christian people have no standards, so that's a, a movie. Yep. Like we can just go with it. <laughs> we're we're done now. Vince is like I, I have him as Vince. I wouldn't have remembered anybody's name except, you know, you guys made me write it down. So Vince <laughs> is like, Oh, everything I do is calculated. It's all a cal- I'm not going up to the customer yet. And then the guy's like, Well, don't calculate too much. And Vince must have been like, should that have been a like a witty put down or a fifth or something? <laughs> yeah, but I couldn't think of anything. So just pretend like I said something witty that was a put down about you calculating. I think we're done here. Good yeah. scene, everybody. <laughs> there are so many scenes like that in this movie where you're like, oh, you guys meant to put humor in there. I get it. If there mm. was humor, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. The cameraman still like zoom. Uh, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for a joke. Was there a joke or acting? It's just- <laughs> oh, speaking of the cameraman having no idea what to do. This is also the part where the kid comes back in with the lunch and and sees his picture's been crumbled up. So this scene ends with like the the camera the first time of many uh, like Eli was talking about where the camera starts zooming in on the kid waiting for him to do like sad <laughs> but the kid's expression does not change at all like it could be a still shot no we have no fucking idea no it's like a candid take of him like it's like in the office where two people go in the other room and you don't <laughs> it's yeah, like exactly. that yeah I cannot believe that neither of you have this and it makes me think that either I'm crazy or I cannot believe that that, that you might have missed this they tried to change the setting. They tried to, they, so they started the scene in the car dealership. And then I think what happened was like, well, we're out of time at that site for shooting. So they went to his house and finished yeah. the scene there as though his house was the, I was, I was losing my mind. Am I crazy? You know, no, no, right? they did the fireplace. They did the fireplace. <laughs> it's not, it's not that, what's it? They just pretend that they finished the scene okay. in the car place, but it's a fucking, it's his house. So here's the, here's the wonderful thing about that. And this is going to happen over and over again in the movie. They did not have, like, they had permission to film in this guy's used car lot, but they weren't going to close the goddamn thing down for it. Right. <laughs> so th- this was like operational the entire time. They kept having like, you know, somebody would show up to buy a car in the middle of their scene and they'd be like, all right, well, we got to scrap that yeah. one. So there was a bunch of times where they had to just be like out behind somebody's house and pre- pretend that the used car lot just had rakes and a lawnmower sitting out back or something. It just, yeah. yeah, it's amazing. It's like when they're playing hockey in Wayne's World. Car! Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, like, exactly. M- right. Car, movie on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. they finished the scene in his house and I was like, okay, so they go through the whole thing where the kid is like, oh, mom brought you a chicken sandwich and he's like, I thought you were going to bring me a burger you know, and saying that. <laughs> and, I, and, and so, but they're at home. Yes. And so I'm like, was this a different lunch? Like, is the is this another occasion where he was being brought lunch and also he threw away his kid's shitty <laughs> picture again? Like, <laughs> this is just a montage of him constantly crumpling up his kid's crappy drawings. <laughs> Once a week, he throws it away. <laughs> right. You see the calendar pages go by of like, he's just crumpling, crumpling, crumpling. Well, there's also this great moment. So, like, we get that and then we get him coming home, right? Because we're supposed to be playing along with the illusion that that happened at work. <laughs> yeah. So we get him coming home and his wife's like, boy, you sure are coming in late. It's like, but we can we can see that it's three in the afternoon. We can see out the windows. <laughs> what time does he normally come in? <laughs> uh... And, of course, since they have nothing else for this character except he's a dishonest car salesman, his wife basically turns to him and says, you know, does it ever bother you that you're a fucking liar who fucking lies to people all the fucking time? (laughs) He's like, I'm a used car salesman. I'm supposed to be a piece of shit. How many times do we have to have this conversation? Oh, this is. And also, okay, this is the creepiest part. I know you guys spend more time around this religious shit than I do. The wife is one of the kids, essentially. Yes. Oh, yeah. Like in this family scenario, the wife is like, "What if maybe tomorrow we went to the to the park or something?" He's like, "Oh, I got." She's one of the kids. It's the creepiest. I wanted to barf during it because you have this dude, and, and everything runs through him, obviously, because it's Christianity, so he's in charge of everything or something, and she's not happy with him. So, like, she has to ask permission for everything. Yeah. It just was so fucking disgusting. Well, and it's not like that changes in Act 2 or Act 3. No. Like, right, that, that doesn't change with the turn in the character. He remains like that. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah, and, and so she's mad at him for overpricing his shitty cars, and then she does, like, like Thomas was saying, she's like, can we please go to church tomorrow? Yeah. 
And and he's like, did we go last week? And she's like, no. And he's like, all right, fine. We can go to church. She's like, thank you. Oh, <laughs> yay. Church is the best part of living in Albany, Georgia. <laughs> hey, let's Jesus. be fair. Dying of coronavirus is the best thing about living in Albany, Georgia. Okay. All right. So his son is... Um, Oh, there's this great scene here. Where his sons uh, hang out with his buddy and they start having a conversation about how they sure hope they don't grow up to be dishonest used car salesmen like the dad. <laughs> uh, and quick note on the uh, the buddy. He has a future at this car dealership. <laughs> this is uh, this is uh, a chonky little boy. <laughs> he's, you're saying he's going to get like a legacy admission? To yeah. this <laughs> just Look at me. I, uh, I belong here. You're hired. No, no paperwork necessary. All right, so all right, then we go to this fucking church. Okay, now I want to point out, because I've been to Albany, Georgia. My brother used to live there. This is a fucking town where the average income is $17,000 a year. God. Think about that when you see this very large, cozy, comfy, nice-looking church that's actually in Albany, Georgia. It's... It's the nicest building in the movie. Somehow yep. this building is in, like present times and the rest of the movie yeah. is in 2002. <laughs> they, they fucking, it's like in, in Wizard of Oz when she gets yes. there and the film's in color. Like, the, the, all of a sudden the cameras are better. It's like HD. <laughs> the driver, the, the mic, everything's mic'd. Like, just because as you walk into this fucking megachurch, everything turns to gold with how embarrassingly wealthy this fucking megachurch is. Yep. <laughs> well, and then so and then they have the scene right, right where the collection plates going around, and we're supposed to be thinking, "Oh, look at him not putting money in the collection plate." Yeah. But I'm of course thinking, "Oh, you greedy fucks! You have such a nice building. These assholes only make seventeen thousand yep. dollars a year. <laughs> How dare you take their money?" It's amazing. I know we we're all thinking the same thing. They have no sense of irony. They have no nope. sense of hypocrisy. The whole thing is about this guy nickel and diming people. You know, selling a, a $6,500 car for $9,000. Okay. Like, yeah. Meanwhile, the church just fucking robs everybody blind right. every every week yeah, for nothing. Selling $0 worth of stuff for any yeah. amount of money is worse. And all you get is this horrendous open mic part of the church service. I don't know what that was about. <laughs> where it's like, church sucks so fucking much. Yeah. Can we all just... It, it sucks. just objectively sucks. And, and God, they didn't bother to tell the extras they were going to pan across to look like they don't fucking hate church. <laughs> yes. Like they are just <laughs> desperately yeah. waiting for this. People are fucking gently stroking a gun along the inside of their lips while this teenager <laughs> oh, up at the front is like, a C chord, I'm not allowed to masturbate. E chord, I'm not allowed to masturbate. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the director's like, cut. Guys, I need the main character to stick out. You know, yeah, like, right. Miserable. Yeah. I mean, he, you, what, you can't just do what he's doing. And they just can't do it. Nope. Like, oh, nope. my God. You know how everyone in Cats got like cat lessons? I bet everyone in this movie got smiling like a human who doesn't pray for death lessons. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but in Albany, uh, lessons like that don't stick. Yeah. Yeah, no, they had to fly a guy in. And we get, by the way, we get some more like, we, we really need to drive home that the kid hates his dad, you know? And so the pastor's like, whoa, boy, you're uh, you're going to be as tall as your dad. And the kid's like, ah, oh, fuck you. I hate my dad's height. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be tall now. You mean liar height? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So and there's just this. OK, so they leave church and it's super brief scene. He put an envelope in the collection plate. Mm -hmm. This motherfucker carried an empty envelope with him to church so he could pretend to give a tithe, which I love. I actually oh, I thought he love grabbed that. it out of the Bible. Anyway, this is the move you do. You absolutely do this move. This yeah. Oh, I, fuck yeah, man, fuck yeah. I am so far on this guy's side. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and then so they, they're, they're leaving church and he's like, so what do you want to do for lunch? And the wife goes. I, I, just, I, I have to point this out. She says, well, we could have a frozen pizza or something else. I'm like, yep, that's always true. You could always do that or not do yeah. that. Right. And his answer yeah. is, I don't want those. And she's like, well, I don't know. You could eat time. I don't know. A thing yeah, that is. Any other thing was part of my uh, part of my list there. 
Well, first off, I have like, she's like, what do you want to do for lunch? He's like, oh, yeah, where's my kid drawing to tear up? That's just my normal <laughs> part of my lunch routine. Got anything, buddy? Got something? Yes. Also, this family eats nothing but lunch. This is the, like the fourth time she's like, burgers? We had burgers for morning lunch. No, for this is afternoon lunch. And then night lunch, we're going to have burgers again. So, yeah. All right. So, Okay. We cut to that night again. It's three o'clock in the fucking afternoon. We can see the sunlight coming in through the windows. She's in bed reading her devotional and he's watching TV, not giving a shit about his father or whatever. Right. Like, like they, they try to establish some daddy issues for him at this mm-hmm. point. Yeah. How do you, is that a little projection there? Are you just, how do you know he's not giving a shit about his father by watching TV? Well, cause, yeah. cause the wife says, Hey, your dad called and he's like, Meh. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, that part. <laughs> That was information now, we need. <laughs> this is where the subtext of this movie comes in. And this is a fun game. Feel free to play along if you watch this movie. Mm. It is called Alex Kendrick Cannot Sit in a Chair. Yes. This will be the, <laughs> the first of literally the, the plot of this movie is Alex Kendrick splayed out on various surfaces of his house. <laughs> that near are chairs, not chairs, couches, and sofas as though he has missed the sitting surface. <laughs> yeah, he's got quite a bit of that. Yeah. And so we get, we get, you know, this is now 10 minutes of just bitter, just nagging. She's has to fight with him. But she, again, she's one of the kids. So it's like this really slightly passive aggressive thing. And I'm just thinking, do people have relationships like this? Like, just one of you murder suicide right now. Just <laughs> yeah. I don't care who. <laughs> right. Flip a coin. One of you do it. It does something. It has to be done. This is not. I I was so annoyed, intense, just from existing around this. I, yeah. I couldn't do it. The, these people's countertops depressed me. Yeah. Which, by the way. <laughs> The only thing this wife will ever do except tell this guy to fuck himself is gently wipe a clean paper towel across a clean <laughs> countertop. <Right>. Yep. <laughs> and then they turn to go to bed, by the way, and I was thinking, like, so no sex then? Or no, you know? so, no. <laughs> no. Well, they just still totally get it on, like, after all that. <laughs> well, if he wants to, because it's Christian, yeah. That's right, true. yeah, exactly. So now, now we, we cut to the next day at work, and this is where they get their... I feel like they believe... This is their like home run humor moment. The fat guys mm. getting out of the Miata thing. Oh <laughs> fat guys in a little car. Humor I can get behind. And well, to except, be fair, except they don't know what to do, right? They don't nope. know what makes that funny. They just so they just <laughs> kind of rock back and forth, and one of them <laughs> falls on the way out. <laughs> Although I will say, magically appearing black character, he pops out of nowhere and goes. You look like two marshmallows trying to get out of a hot wheel and then vanishes again. I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he comes out. He, he signposts like, oh, there's going to be here. <laughs> Wait, everybody. Hold on. The <laughs> yes, funniest thing yes. is about to happen. And then we get the cameraman's a little early, you know, because for a while it's just a car. Yep. You know, and the, 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 so we get a. This is why this movie is two fucking hours long. <laughs> like a minute of like just the car and you can kind of make out that there's people in it. It's like, oh. Wow, this is fucking hilarious, guys. <laughs> and then, like you say, they do the getting out of the car. I, God, I didn't know it was supposed to be comedy, though, until they cut over to the black guy shaking his head. And I was like, oh, that was that was jokes. I, got yeah, it. I okay. didn't know right. until he did the like, oh, white boys. Yeah, I wrote in my notes. Meanwhile, the overweight guys sure are fat joke. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and then this is where the minister shows up to buy a car, the minister from the church scene. And the Tweedledee and Tweedledum are sitting back going like, hey, guys, hey, do you think he'll do you think he'll rip off the minister? How much do you think he'll rip off the minister for? Right. Mm -hmm. And by the way, this movie is about God interceding to get a used car salesman in Albany, Georgia, out of thirty three thousand dollars in debt. And the least realistic thing in it is a mega church pastor needing to buy a used car. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, I need a used car to kind of offset the weight of my private jet. Like I need, I'm gonna. There's a waiting issue. I just want to put it to what? Like, what are you? What are you talking about? I'm gonna oh, hang we it off the, the helicopter. We just want a junker car to drive from our helipad to our room, <laughs> like to our house. So it's just we, you know, we have the BMW, but like we thought, you know, we don't want to get it dirty. We'll just buy a used car for that. What the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, used car. <laughs> 
But damn it, if he doesn't rip off the reverend. Yeah. And there's this moment where the reverend, like, he's like, well, I'm going to pray for you. He's like, dear Lord, please treat Jay. That's the main character. Exactly as well as he treated me through this car sale. And I wanted that to be the, like the fucking liar, liar birthday wish moment yeah. in the movie. <laughs> Same. But they didn't pull the trigger on that. Right. Nope. nope. Anyway. And I'll tell you what else they didn't pull the trigger on. So he's buying this for his daughter to go to college or whatever. Right. I thought we're we're minutes away from a oh the brakes don't work <laughs> and then the pastor dies with his daughter in the car and then he's got to be like Phew, I should do fairer pricing on my vehicle you know, like, or at the very least that like the reverend was going to show up later and the car was going to be fucked up or the daughter was going to turn out to be like a news reporter that told everybody what a bad deal he got or something <laughs> or that this was going to somehow come back anyway yeah. So he goes inside, he's, he's ripped off the ministry, he goes back inside, and Tweedledee and Tweedledum are like, man, you sure did rip off that reverend. We sure are unchristian and unscrupulous here. <laughs> Again, totally on his side. Take that fucker for all he's worth. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. If anybody has ill-gotten gains. You could have told him, like, so this used Camry, I'm going to need $45,000 for it. Ooh, oh, okay, I better, I'm going to have to go into my other pocket. Hold on. <laughs> right, uh, yeah, 40, exactly, 000, exactly. And I'm going to have to open this back pocket that has a zip. Okay, there's the other <laughs> 5000 for you. Cash. Well, and so Tweedledee has this big argument with him. He's like, where he's like, man, I can't believe you would rip off a minister, you know. I mean, I rip off old ladies all the time, but a minister and, and, you know, like we're standing back, like the the three of us anyway, standing back going like, okay, wh why though would that be? Yeah, especially the minister. What? Yeah, <laughs> right. In our used car dealership, we'd be like, get the fucking minister. Get the minister. Yeah. <laughs> Have you considered that your daughter might need three cars? Maybe, <laughs> you know, one for each trimester of school. I don't know. All right. Looks like you owe us 32000 for the car and... $840 trillion in back taxes. So yeah. yeah, it's going to be $840 trillion, <laughs> Yeah. All right, so, and this is where the banker calls, right? So the banker calls to establish that, for reasons, again, that we will never explain, he is $32,000 in debt on his mortgage. And they're going to come seize all his used cars for that over that. Yeah, but luckily it's one of those down home mortgage collectors where you have the same guy who calls you and he's like, hey, uh, Jim, any chance we could get that $32,000 from you on Friday? Uh, Friday's not good. How about Monday? Uh, holiday weekend, holiday weekend. Tuesday? Yeah. For that $32,000 yeah. you owe us? We're a bank? Yeah, uh, you know what? I'll get it from you whenever. I'll get it from you. Whenever. I also love this because this one banker is in charge of everything to do with this business. Yep. I don't, you look, maybe 2003 was a different era, but this banker is like, hey, you're behind on the rent, which, okay, I mean, sure, maybe, the, yeah, the, the bank could manage the, the property, whatever. And then he's like, also, you're overdrafted on your checking account. <laughs> Just another issue mm -hmm. that I'm calling with as the, the, the bank. And your like insurance payment is not so like the bank also provides the insurance for them. Yeah, right. I, I expected like, him to what, go. What else? He says your checking account is overdrawn. I'm like, wait, you know, the meter that where you parked your car is expired. <laughs> like, wait, wait, why yeah. do you uh, know your island this? on Animal Crossing only has one star? <laughs> I just want to let you know. Yeah. <laughs> also, uh, your fire extinguishers are not up to code. Yeah, and you're, it's like this one banker just in charge of everything. Your left testicle isn't making boys anymore. I just uh, thought I'd run. <laughs> through my God. list here. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah, so, and, and then, okay, so, we cut to the, them having, I'm assuming, you know, evening lunch. The pizza! <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, Heath, Heath would have needed a fucking trigger warning, right? I, it, oh, God. This, is, <laughs> this is the worst looking pizza yeah. ever <laughs> captured on Phil, <laughs> it really is. I know we always make fun of how bad a pizza looks, but oh my god, <laughs> I, I literally thought to myself, they couldn't spring for Domino's. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not only that, they are eating this pizza dinner night uh, night lunch as they yeah. call it mm -hmm. with <laughs> plastic cups. They have plastic cups of of like I think he might have a beer, but I don't know. No. Are they the Christians that don't do the drinking? Yeah. Because I'm so 
I grew up, the Christians in my family are the like, yes, we very much do the drinking Christians. There's a different breed, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, the ones we have in South Georgia are not the drinking Christians. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm my the, yeah, the Christians from my lifetime that I've been my family and stuff are the like, no, drinking is awesome. Like <laughs> Jesus, you know, he did the whole water into wine thing. He didn't do water into like more water or like <laughs> water into, uh, you know, the spindrift seltzer or something. <laughs> but anyway, they're eating dinner with the plastic cups. And I just, again, my note here is please just kill each other. Please <laughs> kill each other. Your son will be better off. He'll be happier. Yep. Oh. yep. Ultimately. And then, of course, we have to keep establishing that he's a bad dad, right? So there's, he's like, where's the kid? And she's like, well, he's finishing his science project and his homework. He's like, fuck homework and science projects. Get him in here before he messes up my carpet, you know? <laughs> yeah, by the way, and he says he needs to set the table, which means get the paper plates and the plastic <laughs> cups that were... There's not a lot of setting the table for that pizza. The worst fucking son. Your mother pizza. preheated the oven to 425 and <laughs> slid <laughs> the cardboard box, plastic, and undercoating it all into the oven for 16 whole seconds. So you come here and eat this hydrogenated soy oil that will eventually go directly into the cataract behind your eye. <laughs> The least you could do is rinse out yesterday's plastic cups yeah. for our beverages. At the end of the meal, he's like, do the dishes. The kid just sweeps everything <laughs> off the table into the garbage. Good. <laughs> there. Oh, no, Jesus. I think it would be funnier if he actually washes the paper plates and puts them back in the cupboard. <laughs> oh, and this is so, it's so fucking dark because... She like does a weird passive aggressive fucking we should kill ourselves and then each other prayer over yep. the carpet. Yeah. And then the kid, yeah. this poor kid's like, can I have cereal instead of pizza? And she's like, yeah, man, it's the same fucking corn oil we feed to everywhere that isn't New York or California. So yeah, whatever fucking Taco Bell nightmare construction of sucrose and soil and green you want to stuff into your face before you have your first heart attack at 15. Go ahead. It's just a different shape. It's all it is. Can I have my uh, starch in a, a shape, a smaller shape? I want it with small circles in the wet cow product. All right, you sure? Because daddy and I are having big circle and the dry cow product. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know I do this all the time. I, I have to call out my wife when she does this because like we get pizza and the kids are like not eating their pizza and would rather have something like, you know, oh, they want a, a piece of cheese or something. And my wife is like, no, eat your pizza. And I'm like, that, that's some, a pizza is the least healthy substance in the right? world. Yeah. Like, if they don't want to eat their pizza, don't, they don't have to eat their pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so, and yeah, so she trolls him with her little prayer there about how he sucks and then bitches at him for ripping off the... She's like, wait, did you rip off the minister in the last scene? He's like, why would you... How would you know that? <laughs> And so they, they fight about that for a minute, and then he verbally abuses his wife. <laughs> he, yells, he says, the only time you open your mouth is to eat. And that's horrifying and would have had some emotional weight if his wife hadn't immediately taken a vengeance bite out of her pizza to punctuate <laughs> the moment. So I'm like, oh, God, that's horrible. And I'm trying to empathize with these characters in this movie. And then this woman stuffs an entire fucking bagel bite <laughs> into her mouth. <laughs> All right. So he wanders off to go sit near a couch Miss the couch again, right? Yep. You <laughs> see, it's forming. Yep. He's sitting on the, on the carpet in front of it. You can see a target that the director painted on the couch. <laughs> like, and the smear it, onto the floor. Yeah. <laughs> There's like gaffer tape on there. Like this is the stuff. <laughs> so yeah, so he's fucking hate watching TV, clicking from channel to channel. And he happens upon this televangelist who sure does make a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but here's the thing. Like, televangelists, for the most part, are like eloquent speakers. So I assume this is someone that Alex Kendrick owed money to. Because he's <laughs> he's got all the televangelist rhythms, but none of the speaking. Yeah. He's just like, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, Bob, Bob Black Sheep. Have you any <laughs> All he does is 
because he says bondage like 400 <laughs> times. And I'm just like, bondage, bondage, bondage. He's like, if you're, the reason you're in bondage is to burn to burn. And I'm like, what if God wants me to be in bondage? Is it, <laughs> should I should I be in bondage? Well, so, but now the fucking sermon that he's delivering, if he translated it out of Christian, would just be white privilege, white privilege, white privilege, right? Because everything he said, he's like, you know, everything about your life is a result of the choices that you've made. You are responsible yeah. 100% yeah. for everything that has happened in your life. And by the way, this is something that was in intentionally inserted into Christian theology to prop up white supremacy. I feel like that's that's like worth noting. Oh, okay, cuz I thought it was just to prop up the multi mega billion dollar churches who are like <laughs> they literally the people pay a guy to be wealthy and say you're not wealthy like me because of your choices. <laughs> that's, what the, that's what Christianity is. Yep. So fucking oh. weird. And then they try for this like pseudo supernatural moment, right? Because he turns the TV off and he throws the remote and the TV comes back on. Oh, I totally missed that. <laughs> I uh, I had to watch it twice because I saw that in Noah's notes and I was like, oh, that's what they were going for there. Yeah, just like, I've reached my limit. Each scene, you know, I can do about five minutes and then my brain just starts giving that yeah. <laughs> Well, right, but so here's how badly they do this. He throws the fucking remote, the TV comes back on, he picks up the remote again and he turns it off and nothing happens. So... Yeah, either God reached out and turned the TV back on, or when he threw the remote, it hit the on button on the cushion. You know, like that yeah. happens. So anyway. There wasn't like an additional message no. after that. It was just like, no, it's maybe like, it literally wasn't in the script. Why? Privilege. Yeah. Also, we get the pan shots of the sun cry sleeping. Yep. The director was like, all right, the sun and the water, you're going to be sleeping, but you're also in the process of crying as you're sleeping. Because <laughs> that's that's our sense of subtlety. Like, that's what we're able to do here. That's our artistic ability. So the sun's cry sleeping, and then they go to the wife, and the wife is cry sleeping. I'm just yeah, like, can wow. You, just can you sleep and suicide. hate him at the same time with your face? Can you do... Can <laughs> We get that. I really wanted her to slowly reach under the pillow, pull out a piece of pizza. And get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll tell you what, though, we deserve a break, so we're going to take one, but we'll be back in a minute with even more Flywheel. Hey there, welcome to the Ethical Store, where you only pay what you think you should. How can I help you? Yeah, I'm looking for a new uh, cell phone. Nice. Okay, and how moral would you like to be about that? Uh, I don't know. What are your options? Okay, well, there's feudalism. Uh, the phone is free, and it's brought to you on a golden pillow. Wow, that's awesome. But everybody else is a literal slave. Oh, I don't love that. Okay, all right. Not a feudalism guy. Fine. Uh, how about uncontrolled capitalism? Okay. Uh, now, th in this one, the phone is $500, but we can get it to your house in two days. Hmm, and no slaves? Yeah, I mean, what are you going to do? You can give the guy digging cobalt out of the ground 15 bucks an hour? I would. Sure. Um, do you have anything more ethical? Okay, all right. I knew you were looking for purely ethical capitalism. Right this way, sir. Everybody gets paid a fair wage. Everything is made ethically. Even Dave here gets free housing when he needs it. Hi, thank you. Thank you. Oh, no problem. Yeah. So uh, how much is the phone here? Uh, about $2,400. $2,400? Yep. Just about $2,400. But Dave has a house. I love my house. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> let's uh, let's go with the first one. Uh, no problem, sir. Oh, Dave, stop whining, you commie. Oh. <laughs> And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to open up with Jay reaching his breaking point, I guess. Like Tweedledee is overcharging some young woman for a car and he just can't take it anymore. See, I was just head over heels for this girl. And I'll tell you why. Everyone in this film is the ugliest, most yes. hideous, unattractive <laughs> person in the world. Except this one girl in yep. the entire film who is a girl. Like that's just a, <laughs> yep. just a girl. Like, yep. Yeah, it's just, just a normal about, looking person. Yeah. And so and that was I was such like, a relief. Oh my at God, this my point. eyes. <laughs> I did the, my heart did the boom, boom, like out of my shirt. Just like I couldn't even. <laughs> yeah. She's not spilling out of her clothes like porridge in a fairy tale. So. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't have half a microwave pizza in her mouth with right. the plastic still on it. 
It was I like where do they get her? I seriously, she must be related to somebody. Yeah, uh-huh. she's certainly not Albany, Georgia. Yeah, she's like young enough to where we can get we can trick her into being into this movie. <laughs> the one normal person <laughs> in this whole movie. So so he sells the car to her and then they leave and and we leave Jay, the, the main character in the car dealership by himself and he looks up and there's a sign up above him that says honesty is the best policy and they have this dramatic moment where he pulls that down and he's going to rip the sign but he can't rip the sign because A, he lacks the strength and B, the dude wasn't going to let him rip up his honesty as the best policy <laughs> sign. So they like he grabs it and he goes to tear it and they pan up and we hear this fucking sound effect which is very clearly fabric being ripped right it's not a paper product that's getting ripped here they just grabbed when uh captain von trapp rips the nazi flag they just like (laughs) grab that sound cue (laughs) yeah so he proud boys that sign for a little bit and his sales force come back in right and they're like wasn't there a sign or something or a clock up there we don't know much about honesty because of how unchristian we are and whatnot and my notes just like, should we joke about being fat some more? Like, <laughs> scene, <laughs> takes a minute for the scene to do anything. They're like, what do we, ah, uh, fat guy. Yeah. They got, they, they got to rev up to each bit of dialogue. They're like, okay. <laughs> I like chips. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> right. So, okay. So, so then they have the, I, like, they, I learned it from watching you moment. Right where Jay comes in and he's like, yeah. hey, Tweedledee, you rip that lady off. You shouldn't do that anymore. We're going to be an honest car company. He's like, I learned it from watching you. And then they they, they wander off and, and, and are sad or whatever. Yep. Yeah. But and it's like they're totally right. Like, I don't. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, you the he Jay is the king ripoff artist of the world. Right. So, well, and, yeah. at the very least, if he's going to like ha- turn over a new leaf, he has to like establish that. He can't just go like, "Hey, stop being th- the thing that you've always been and I've paid you." Hey, stop doing exactly what I've trained to, you exactly, to do this right. whole time. Yeah. Right. I was hoping all the other characters in the movies could change first. No, all right, me. <laughs> I guess I'll do mine first. <laughs> so yeah, so he wanders out into the lot to sad for a little while and, and we come across this old guy. Now we haven't really discussed Max yet, right? So Max is the old guy that's fixing up the triumph that works for him and will occasionally just show up to give him magic old person wisdom. Oh, but this is the scene where they try to make the flywheel <laughs> metaphor yep, work. Yep. Uh-huh. And it's like, you ever do that game at camp where everyone tells one word of a story? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's how they try to establish the flywheel metaphor. He's like, yep, yeah. this car, I think the flywheel might be stripped. Uh-huh. And that would be for the... <laughs> Car. Car. <laughs> well, first off, okay, so old Gus or whatever the fuck his name was, Max, old Max, he's been trying to fix this car for three, four months. Like the whole movie, mm-hmm. you know, however long this movie is, he's been trying to fix the car. But he's been doing so by just having one crescent wrench and loosening <laughs> and tightening a single bolt inside. Like, ah, oh, dead gummit, if I find the right bolt to tighten. Yeah, right, right. I'm trying lefty loosey and righty tighty, damn yeah. it. <laughs> and then I, I agree with you. I think the, the metaphor of this movie, this scene is the metaphor scene. And I think the direction was just talk about the car. And I think anything you say will be a metaphor. So just. Yep. Go with that. And they're like, well, you see, the thing about a beautiful car is you got to make sure you turn your headlights off when <laughs> you park it. And they're just like, yeah, yeah, that's good. Just keep going. Yep. Pop the, the hood. And is this a metaf- Okay. Uh, and, Rewind. And, 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 and look, yeah. Backwards. Miles per gallon. <laughs> like, do this for 10 minutes and then we'll just take any word you use and that'll be the title of the film and the metaphor for the <laughs> don't worry <laughs> our audience are people who read depth in the bible so no matter what you say <laughs> you're gonna yeah. fucking nail it and they kind of do it with that tone you know, yeah and that's why you gotta jiggle the keys a little when <laughs> Well, they even set him up for this, right? Like, because he even asks him, he's like, well, what does a flywheel do? <laughs> you know? And, and then and they're like, oh, okay, so now we're going to dig in and they're going to give this whole illusion about how, well, sometimes life is coming at you too fast and sometimes you don't have enough energy. So you need a flywheel to distribute the whatever, something, 
right? But they don't know enough to do that. So they're like, uh, well, it makes the car go. If without it, it wouldn't go. Uh, and you need to go with a car. Which is true about pretty much yes, any other exactly. part of the car. <laughs> they don't differentiate it in any way from any other necessary yeah. part of the car. <laughs> It also shines a ton of light on why Max hasn't gotten this thing fixed in how long this thing. What's a flywheel do? I don't fucking know, man. I, I have like, a crescent wrench. Yeah. Jay is like, let me get this straight. You've known that you just need a new part this whole time, and you've been billing me for labor for like four weeks of just tinkering like anyway have i told you about jesus because i can tell you about jesus like, right now yeah. <laughs> sounds like we need to order that fucking part what are you doing out here all day that's it <laughs> all right so the so old, old guy wraps it up telling him about how jesus is like a flywheel and then we go watch him sit near his couch some more right so again <laughs> this time you can tell he missed hard because he's like splayed out <laughs> yep. he's very obviously hurt <laughs> there's like an ice pack on his ass like they have <laughs> some crew member was like, damn, you're going to need this. And we get to see he's looking at all the family photos. And this is his actual family, right? Like, no. this is not, he didn't hire. No, it, oh, no. No, it's not. These are th his actual family was even worse than this, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Yeah, well, I was going to say that earlier in the in the credits. I noticed it wasn't his real no, family. Uh, we see her wedding pictures and <laughs> she's wearing. It's like a community theater production of Lord of the Rings is this <laughs> wedding dress in this fucking photo. And we see him look at it. And then again, it pans back to him. And I know he's supposed to be acting, but he doesn't. He's completely blank faced. So it looks like he looks at the wedding picture and he's like, ugh, what the fuck was she wearing? <laughs> See, I, I thought when I looked at it, I was like, your wife used to look like that. No wonder you're upset. Like, this is, wow. <laughs> Things have, I mean, I don't know what he looked like, but it yeah. just shows the wife. So <laughs> things have gone downhill. It's, you know, a few dozen too many uh, cardboard pizzas a day will do that to you. And apparently, yeah. You just got to keep it to one lunch. I was, that would. <laughs> yeah. So now he's going to do his come to Jesus prayer, but he's going to do it in a very, very strange way. Yeah. Is it come to Jesus or is it come to the prophet? Muhammad, I, like, I think it. I think it fits in with the rest of his. Doesn't know how furniture works. I guess he doesn't know how like kneeling because he just becomes a Muslim, right? Am I? Am I nuts? Or or maybe he's just hedging his bets, right? Like later on, he's gonna like try Buddhist <laughs> shit or something. He's like, I'm gonna put some incense in a shrine. We see him do a little bit of each position. I think. Yeah, it's like he's shooting for OnlyFans. He's throwing it back <laughs> for God. It's. It's really upset. It's not a position I ever wanted to see Alex Kendrick in. And I, I think I speak on behalf of Jerry Falwell's bull boy when I say that's a really upsetting <laughs> image. <laughs> All right. So, so sometime later, so he has his prayer, he comes to Jesus. And then sometime later, he's sitting around in his room noise when his wife gets home. <laughs> Jesus at the hiss in this fucking movie. And he wants to apologize for, you know, the abuse the night before. And this is such a wildly uncomfortable scene because this is the, I just abused you and now I'm going to talk you down from doing anything about it. like the, like the right oh, thing God. for this character to do is leave this man. Right. Oh yeah, for sure. But this movie is going to reinforce the idea that no, no, your abusive husband, if he comes to Jesus, will be just fine. Stick it out. Well, if I know anything about marriage, what your wife wants you to do is, you know, after you verbally abuse her, is to apologize by dominating the conversation the entire time and saying all the things she's feeling at her mm -hmm. and not letting her talk. <laughs> and then then you fixed it. Then uh, everybody everything's fine. Make up sex. And then you explain how she feels about your apology. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What's amazing is that this is this great moment where when we get this occasionally where Christianity understands that yelling at your wife is bad but they don't know why it's bad. It's like when you're trying to teach a toddler not to climb into a stove, but they don't understand hot or burn or death yet. So they're just like, okay, so that door I can't go in, but this one I can? This is fucking weird. <laughs> All right, so so we cut to him now. It's, it's the next morning. He's apologized to his wife. He's turned his life over to Jesus. He's going to go to church now. But it, So we cut to him like ready to sell cars the way Jesus would. 
And his first step of being a Jesus-y guy, if you guys noticed, is to park terribly across three parking spots. Oh, I didn't <laughs> notice that. It's like, what? It's like in the last day of Groundhog Day when he finally figures it out. If the fr- He wakes up and just like punches a guy out. Oh, fuck. Damn it. You know, like, that's, not a, that's not a good start. All right. So, yeah. So, we, we cut to... He's at work. He's reading through the Bible, looking for wisdom. Uh, and it's like, this is so lazy. They, It's Psalm 1, guys. Come on. Come on. Yeah. You lazy fuckers. Well, it's a very long book. It's a very long book. <laughs> he doesn't even have the full Bible. He's got like his Bible cheat sheet before work. He's like, all right, now, now that I've given over this used car emporium to God, let me see what he wants. Murder those guys. Murder those guys. Murder those guys. Okay, here's something vague enough I can use for used car sales. <laughs> right. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, foreskins, foreskins, yeah, foreskins. Right. There's a, lot of, a lot of foreskin Beget, stuff in here. Beget, I don't, I don't know if that applies to used car lots, but uh, so. yeah. And I love too. like the best way to turn your failing business around is to not be working when you should be working. Just reading a fucking book. Yeah. I don't think Jesus is a good like business owner example either. Did he sell anything? Did he? No. Yeah. Now that you think about it, we don't hear about how great he was as a carpenter. So no. <laughs> yeah. It might've been a failing business and that's why he turned to the whole God stuff. Like, yeah, he was like, sure. oh, fuck it. Profit margin. A hundred percent. Cause he says, all right, Lord, this is your lot. I will honor you with it. And I just picture like a big booming voice being like, no, thanks. <laughs> in Albany, Georgia. Wow, you shouldn't have. Yeah. God's version of getting a gift from grandma. He's just like, wow, this is great. <laughs> um, where, where did you get it? Yeah. Is there, oh, where's the, uh, where's the receipt for the, uh, for the you have a oh, gift? Oh, yeah. Gift oh, receipt. Oh, great. Glad this. You, oh, Jesus. So, so, okay. So, Tweedledee gets to work, right? And they and we have to have a moment where they, it, him and Tweedledum say, you know, like, hey, you're overweight. No, you're overweight. We're both overweight. You know, we have to do that again. Oh, this is the thing where they're like, we were supposed to, for, at this point, I'm shipping them as characters. I don't know if you guys did this, but I was like, oh, this is a, this is a fiery gay love story and I'm yeah. fucking on board for it. But they have this thing where he's like, we were supposed to meet at depressing name for a diner in Georgia. <laughs> no. I went to even more depressing name for a diner in yeah. Georgia. No, that one was closed because of the suicides last week. So that's All why right. we were going to go to this one. All right. I tell you what, tomorrow morning, 8 a.m., I'll meet you at failure and shoot yourself. I'll yeah. see you there. <laughs> and then Max comes through and says, well, I sure am the black guy in this movie. And then he wanders <laughs> off. <laughs> My note is like, does he get a line? And like, he does get a line. I still don't know what he does there no nope. he's, he's apparently employed and literally his line is essentially like i'm just a black guy like yeah i don't, <laughs> I don't yep. have it word for word but he's like well i'm just a black man and to tweedle d and tweedle dumb and then cut yeah oh <laughs> it's so so we get this long painful moment of breakfast humor and it, it, and then Jay calls everybody together so he can apologize to his whole team for being a dishonest unjesusy bad atheist person and and he says, like, from now on, we're not going to sell our cars for big profits and whatnot. <laughs> and his employees who work on commissioners, like, I'm sorry, did you just say that you're going to pay us a lot less money? And he's like, yes, yes, I did. Yes. Say that. And to be fair, their first reaction is, oh, OK, so like you want to treat people fairly. So you're going to raise our salary to make up for the commission loss. And he's like, nope, nope, not going to do that. No, I would like to treat people fairly, but. I don't make less money. So you guys make right, less right, money. No, I want to treat people fairly. Not you guys. Not you two. Yeah, I'm a Christian. You are, you're employees. I don't have yeah, to treat right. you fairly. I don't have to treat employees. <laughs> are you kidding? You're lucky I'll use a fucking barcode. You're lucky I don't hit you with a stick. I'm pretty sure if you wake up in 24 hours, I can hit you with a stick. Um. So yeah, but it, so his workforce is like, dude, like, fuck you like we came into work today and you're like oh, you're gonna make half as much money no we're leaving we're gonna go make more money rather than less one of the guys is like i'm taking my chips and i'm out of here he just like takes a whole has arms full of bags <laughs> of chips <laughs> well and again this for my shipping the star-crossed lovers they leave together 
Brian's like, I'm leaving. Vince, you coming with me? And we see this beautiful moment where Vince decides between, you know, staying in his small job or following the love of his life into a new place where they can finally be together. And they fucking do it. They Thelma and Louise yeah. their way out of that car dealership. It's beautiful. Yeah, you get a minute of the camera on Brian while Vince is like, babe, hey, babe, babe, you coming? Hey, sweetie, sweetie, babe, hon, oh. I got chips. I've got chips. I've got chips. Now I really, really wanted him to have swept him up in his arms like the end of Officer and a Gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> Hungry eyes. <laughs> oh, shit. And then, of course, he, he they leave and we turn back to the black guy. He goes, I told you they were some strange white boys. You know, the da 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 walks off. Yeah. Oh, my God. And then the J, by the way, is like, oh, I'm kind of glad he quit because the numbers really would not have worked. You know, like, in fact, you're all fired because I don't know why any of you work here. Right. Yeah, I don't even know what <laughs> and, you uh, do. <laughs> black guy, I, I, I just keep paying you for like, it says here on the invoice, um, shaking your head disapprovingly, <laughs> X, you know, times 14. I don't know if I can afford that anymore. Apologies, but... <laughs> No, stop shaking your head disapprovingly. No. I can't pay you for this. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm not. <laughs> this is not billable. I'm not. <laughs> All right. So, so the Tweedles go to leave, and damn it, if old car fixer guy hasn't hooked one of their brakes up to the horn. Oh, yeah. Which is the closest <laughs> they ever get to humor in this movie. But the actor. The actor can't manage it, right? Because they obviously didn't do that because that's a crazy sentence. So <laughs> they were just like, and then as you're driving away, every time you break, you're going to hit the horn. And he's like, got it. <laughs> no, nope, that, that was you breaking. Oh, sorry. <laughs> nope, now, now the break is off because the car is going. <laughs> stop, stop hitting it while I'm talking to you. Just, like, when you I'm hit having the break, a hard time doing this and holding my chips at the same time. <laughs> the issue. If I could get a crew member to feed me the chips while I do this, I think I could pull it off. That's why you didn't let me wear my beer hat full of chip crumbs. <laughs> 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 and by the way, like, also, this is supposed to be like the godly turn, right? So, like, Jay and we, you know, the, the old man who apparently works full time as a as a flywheel replacement guy or whatever. <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. he just a crescent wrench operator. He just wrench. He's supposed to be super saintly too, right? But then when the guy leaves, they're pranking him, like, yeah, in what's probably a dangerous way. Like, I hope there's a huge car accident because of this, and they well, right, yeah, several people are killed. Right, they're 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 taking petty revenge on the guy who left the job because he came in one day and the boss told him he was going to pay him a lot less money. Yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> how the fuck do you guys think you're the good guy in anyway? Yeah, yeah, you're really holy. Wow. But yeah, so he calls his wife and tells him like, "Hey, I'm Jesusy now, but that means that everybody quit, so I'm almost certainly going to lose our business." And his wife's like, "Okay, well, let me call your dad so that he can be proud of you in the next scene, right?" which I have no idea why that scene exists. Right. Yeah. I all I can imagine is that this is Alex Kendrick forcing his dad once in his life to say he's proud of him <laughs> so he can capture it on camera. Yeah, I think uh, Donald Trump Jr. tried the same thing, but yeah. you know, Donald Trump was like, fuck you, kid. I'm not. He held a whole work. RNC over it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, before dad can show up, we have to have the moment where they find the flywheel, which is amazing, right? Because this the whole thing, he's like, yeah, I got to find a flywheel for this Triumph TR3. And boy, I hadn't made them since 1958. Sure will be difficult to find that. The way they resolve it is he walks out there and the guy's like, oh, I found that flywheel, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's it. Where was it? It was in the movie plot store. <laughs> <laughs> It was on the uh, props table labeled Flyway yeah. is uh, where I found it. Jesus Christ. But then his dad shows up that night to to pray over him and tell him now that he loves Jesus, he's proud of him and, and whatnot. Right. And I my whole time, I'm like, is he a ghost? Please tell me the dad is a ghost. Did he <laughs> okay. die? You know, like I'm trying to make this more interesting. At a certain point, he sets down his cane. I'm like, yeah, he doesn't need his cane anymore because he's a ghost. <laughs> well, it's like, no, his dad just drove from Atlanta or something. Why yeah. did they zoom in on the cane? It was so weird. Why yeah. was there so much sexual tension with the dad? <laughs> yeah. Did anyone read that but me? 
that's pretty common in the Bible. The angels, there's that's a lot true. of sexual tension. Yep. You know, there's a whole wrestling scene, if I'm remembering correctly. That's right? what I was missing. And Alex Kendrick, his actual dad wrestling scene <laughs> would have made this movie for me. Well, and the and also like the way dad explains Jesus, it all keeps sounding like Holy Trinity Bukaki with all the showering of <laughs> gifts and raining down on him and a lot of touching. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It look it's it's here's the whole conspiracy. The conspiracy is I and apologies. I just this all I made all these connections right now. I'm going to do a quick TED talk. <laughs> Christianity allows men to be pieces of shit. Agreed, right? You yep. get to yell at your, your sure. wife. You get to yeah. be an asshole. Mm-hmm. And then what they do is they also think that anyone who rejects God does so because they have dad issues. And so this movie is like that's the whole thing. Like if you accept Jesus Christ back in your life, your asshole dad will come back and be like, I'm proud of you, son. Yep. And everything will be fine. And so it's, and thus the circle continues. So he's an asshole to his kid, even though he thinks he's being a good guy. And then, you know, if, if his son like, you know, leaves the church, then he could be like, well, he has daddy issues. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and, and they reinforce that with the very next scene, right? Cause the next scene is him being a good father and a good husband, right? And he comes in to see his kids, volcano project and shit <laughs> okay this was great because this is so obviously alex kendrick being blown away by this totally fine science project <laughs> volcano. but like it's the only it's either the only acting he does in the movie or alex kendrick is shitting himself at the thought of the <laughs> fucking craftsmanship that went into this paper mache yeah. volcano. Oh, he's staring at it like he wants to fuck it. <laughs> yeah, I like the idea that the actor himself literally has never seen a science project. Like, he's like, wow. And this this is, vol- will stuff come out of it? Oh my God. Dude. Yeah, dude, that's not your lines. Can you, no, 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 hold on, look at this. Look at this. It's like, it's f- wrinkly. It's folded like a real, it looks like a mountain. It's, oh my God. Is, is there real lava in here? No, dad, it's not real lava. Hey, look, so he goes to make like his apology to this, to the son and he's like, you know, I'm a shitty dad. And the kid's like, yep. He's like, you didn't have to agree mm-hmm. that quick. You could have, <laughs> but okay, I'm going to be better. Um, it's, it's God's fault that I haven't been better yet. Right. You could see the wheels turning in the kid's head of like, how do I not agree too fast? Mm, you don't say. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then, so they, then we have this scene where he's with his wife and, and he's helping her fold laundry now because he's a good mm. husband now. Yeah. Cause they also operate a hotel. I, so like, <laughs> there's there's so many towels. Stacks and stacks of towels. <laughs> yes. like, what? This was insane. The pure, <laughs> they have 500 pure white towels yes. that they are. Yeah folding together. Oh my god, that was his KKK stuff. Well, they have a lot of pizza grease to wipe out. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh. All right, so yeah, and so they're having this conversation where he's like, yeah, she's like, you know, with all your employees gone, will you be able to run the store? He's like, they only sat around and ate fucking chips. Of course, why would it (laughs) matter? But he's like, no, I wouldn't be able to do it by myself. If only I can find somebody that I can rip off and underpay to do the work. Yeah. Then I won't have to rip people off anymore. And wouldn't you know it, God will definitely send you someone you can exploit, whose labor you can exploit. That's what God does. I like the idea, too, that he gets there in the morning and there's just a pallet of chips like the, like the normal <laughs> <laughs> two employees have been ordering just like tons and to metric tons of chips. The every guy day. from the vending machine company is standing outside <laughs> weeping hysterically. <laughs> Uh, I got a kid in college, man. <laughs> and here's the thing. You're not doing any business. You don't need more sales. No. He's always like, I don't know how I'm going to do it. But then the whole thing, again, the, like I started off at the beginning, he lowers his prices. He's going to be so fair. So he's selling the car for less. And now he has no fucking customers. <laughs> and he's like, I need more people yes. to pay money to do nothing. <laughs> right. That's the only way this business works. Yeah. So, okay. So now Jesus sends him a cheap salesman, right? This guy shows up and he says, hi, it's the next scene. I want to work for you for six weeks for minimum wage. Okay. I got to say, I genuinely laughed when the guy's like six weeks or, or Jay is like six weeks. And the guy's like, Minimum wage. <laughs> I think that's actually how Christians think about employees. Like employees, no like, question. Yeah, yep. definitely exploit me. You can hit me if you want. <laughs> as long as I wake up this, within twenty four hours. <laughs> this explains any tip I've ever gotten from a Christian is yeah. that they watch this movie <laughs> right. and we're just waiting for me to go minimum wage. <laughs> Jesus. 
Um, and oh, and would you look at that? Max got the triumph running off yeah, camera. He finally tightened, <laughs> yeah, he finally <laughs> tightened the correct bolt. Yeah. Like, oh, it's the working bolt. It's I, it was loose, and now it works. And the best part is, this is where we watch these two actors realize that there wasn't like a thing towards the plot with this car. He's like, I got it working. And he's like, great. Was so I... now we sell it and then it saves the dealership, right? Nope. 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 No. Just the car. It's here. Cause now. you could probably get now. the 32 grand you need out of that triumph. Now that it's running. No. <laughs> nope. Uh, okay. Not, nope. Nope. All right nope. then. Tell me what the flywheel does again. <laughs> <laughs> It drives. You're going to just have to believe me. We're not showing it on camera. No, but it, oof, absolutely boy, does not. it drive. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and then we get this great moment where Alex Kendrick tries to write dialogue, right? He's sitting around oh. with his new minimum wage employee. And the, the guy basically turns to him and goes like, so you, you come here often? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it is where he tries to pitch us on Albany, Georgia. Oh my God. Yeah. He goes, oh. it's it's a good size city. It has 75,000 people. You just told us so much more about the size of your penis than you know you told us, dude. <laughs> good size oh, let me, city. Let me tell you about the many attractions and fun <laughs> things to do here in Albany, Georgia. There's this used car lot. There's... <laughs> <laughs> killing Apparently yourself another and- car lot across the street by <laughs> yep. the way a depressingly car. named diner you can eat there this scene is in here because he got fifty dollars from the albany tourism board <laughs> to do this yeah, movie which to be fair was their budget for the decade of 2000 yeah. like they still that was all 2000 through 2010 they were like we gave alex kendrick that fifty dollars <laughs> to say that albany feels like a city <laughs> Nothing more in the coffers after that. That's uh, that's all we got. So yeah, and so okay, so they they talk a little while, and he's going like, you know, again, the dialogue is so stilted. The the new employee is saying stuff like, "Speaking of selling cars, you sure love Jesus a lot, huh? Shouldn't we rip the yeah. customers off at least a little bit? No, okay." And then they have this great moment where they need to set up the big payoff that's going to come later in the movie. So he's like, hey, um, I've been working here for maybe a day. It's unclear. <laughs> Why don't you take off and give me the keys yeah. and I'll lock up and handle all the paperwork and all the private stuff here. Yeah, the with, with, with the like $300,000 worth of inventory, you would then be entrusting me. Yeah, you know, why not? Right. There is no fucking way you could possibly trust this doofus. He's the <laughs> least trustworthy looking person. And before I knew what was happening in this movie, I wrote down like, He's actually an undercover investigator trying to bust the used car salesman serial killer, maybe? Uh, <laughs> turns out, uh, close. Yeah, actually. All right, and then, th- again, this is such a lazily written movie. Then we cut to five weeks later when that guy's about to leave. He'd been there for a week, apparently, as of that scene. Hmm. Right, so it's like five weeks later, the, 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 that employee's not going to be there anymore. And he's like, Ke- Kevin, thank you for working here. Yes, I thought you would be a dick, but you're not. <laughs> okay, goodbye. This is over now. Yeah. They're like, I wish we sold more cars because, again, when we lowered prices, nobody wanted to buy the car. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then the, the banker calls and he's like, uh, hey, man, did you guys just flash forward five fucking weeks? You owed me $32,000. You you were supposed to give that to me on Friday. It's been six fucking weeks now. <laughs> the banker is like in a time warp. He doesn't know. Uh, where am I? Am I with you? In the- <laughs> am I calling you from the past now? <laughs> <laughs> it's an amazing thing where he goes, $12,000 is a good start, but um, it's not the amount of money you owe us. It's an, <laughs> it, it, it is... Uh, and amount of money, so <laughs> good for you, I think. Yeah. And, and Alex Kendrick is just like, yeah, I uh, wanted to sell more cars, but I um didn't. Can <laughs> yes. I have another month to pay you? It's like, dude, you just had five weeks in the last fucking title card. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he, yeah, this is where they say, like, you'd have to sell every car on the lot. To make this payment, I'm like, it's twenty four thousand bucks. You yeah. have to sell every car on the lot to make a month's rent. What the <laughs> fuck is this? 
Well, and two, look, they these idiots do the fucking math for us. They tell us later that the car has, or that the lot has thirty five cars. They tell us that they're making fifteen hundred dollars a car. That doesn't add up to twenty four thousand no. dollars. Just don't give us the numbers if you don't want us doing the fucking math. Well, I think they're paying old Gus like eighty thousand dollars a year to just <laughs> be a full time, like. Wrench turner, you know? yeah, yeah. yeah. Wrencher slash metaphor constructor, like that's yeah. what he yeah, does. Yeah, right. Sam makes six figures shaking his head at white yeah, people. Well, right. so yeah, that's <laughs> overhead. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. I get it. All right. Yeah, he's well. There's a lot of lawsuits that uh, the the one black employee is. <laughs> <laughs> they're paying those off. So yeah, so the banker leaves and he's like, "Well, you have until Friday, or I'm going to come and seize all your cars." You have until Friday, five weeks after the Friday. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Don't you go flashing forward in time on me again, damn it. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we basically now had a character look directly into camera and start a sentence with, well, the stakes of this movie are, so I feel like we've earned another break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. <laughs> Will he sell enough cars? Will he sell cars enough? Will enough cars be sold by him? Find out the answers to literally just that question. We return for the yes, he will sell enough cars conclusion of Flywheel. Um, hi. Hi, do you work here? Yes. Can I help you find a car today? Wait a second. Are you God? Yeah. Yeah, that's me. Wow. What are you doing selling used cars? Yeah. Um... Well, like a buddy of mine, he kind of gave me this place, so I'm, I'm helping him out of debt. Huh. Uh. Well, that's nice of you. Yeah. Well, you know, he did turn his life over to me, so. Huh. Yeah. So, are are you a Honda man? You look like a Honda man. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Hey, my grandma has cancer. Why did you give my grandma cancer? Dude, look, I'm trying to sell some cars here, okay? I don't have time to do the whole God gig while I'm also doing that. Uh, okay, sure. Yeah, that Yeah, that makes sense. Do um, you have any good Hondas? I don't know. Is he who smashes the heads of the Amalekite babies against the rocks happy? E yes. Yes, yes, they are. Oh. Let, me, let me show you some four doors. Cool. <laughs> And we're back for still more of this shit. And we're going to open up on our heroes sitting around at home looking for some wisdom in the Bible. And, and this is fictional, so he'll find some, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, or, or he won't, because like the only thing that the Bible really says at this point is, yeah, God's got that shit. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's amazing because he's like, oh, yeah, uh, what's the Bible say about when your business is about to go out? And she's like, oh, oh Bible says stop being a negative Nancy. And he's like, okay, <laughs> stop being a negative Nancy. Got it. Well, the effect of everything they've read in the Bible is like, God wants you to be perfectly still and do absolutely nothing yep. nor worry about anything. And then he'll sell the cars for you? I don't know the the last part. Like, it, everything they've read is like, don't do anything. Literally do right. not stop. Don't don't say anything. Stay there and just believe in God. And then magically you'll have a thriving business. That's how it works. Well, and it's so bizarre that the movie actually has to confront that. Right. Like, Because he turns to his wife and he says, wow, you know, to a non-Christian observer, this would seem like we were thinking backwards, huh? And she's like, yep, but we're they would be wrong for various reasons, wouldn't they? Yeah. And they have this weird conversation about like, it's not our money. It's God's money that he lets <laughs> us use. And I wrote in my notes at this point, I would tell someone that their sub dom relationship is getting unhealthy and they need an outside <laughs> intermediary to like set lines and talk about what they want out of a financial domination relationship. <laughs> I, I, I would start sitting them down with God to talk about like, you know, it's not all about safe words. It's also about like what is making him happy. Can we talk about this? <laughs> <laughs> Have you tried fucking Jerry Falwell Jr.'s wife together? Huh? That seems <laughs> like it might be more fun. So, uh. all right. So now he's at the lot. He's being a good dad uh, when um, well, he's competing with his son having a, a car drawing contest. Yeah. Oh, well, that's, we've been competing in a good way. He's right? like getting way too serious about it, too. The kid's <laughs> yeah. like, my car has rockets on the top. Daddy, like, oh, your car fucking sucks. My yes. car is, is better. Triple booster rockets. <laughs> they go super soft. Shut up. Infinity. Fuck he just crumples Infinity. it up again. <laughs> <laughs> He's just wrestling. We come back to him. Him and the son are wrestling on the floor. <laughs> just lights his picture on fire. Yeah. <laughs> 
to stuff his son's picture in his mouth. Whoa! Yeah, I ate your car. I ate How fast is it now? How fast is it now? <laughs> So, and so, okay, so while he's sitting around hanging out with the kid, Mary comes in. Mary is a character we've never met, but Mary is in desperate financial straits and can't pay off the rest of her car. So she has to give the car back because, you know, that's how it works. You can either, you know, make the payments or give them back the car. They're fine with it either way. Yep. And her financial situation literally gets worse by the oh, sentence. God. She's like, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I have to give back the car. My, my husband lost his job. And of course, our son is sick and. He's sick because he tried to give his three-legged puppy radiation for the puppy's cancer. But of course, the puppy bit him. Now he has Spider-Man powers, but for cancer puppies. And oh, it's fine. <laughs> well, it's so funny because they have to keep adding shit because the callousness of Christians is such that they're like, well, you should have got right with the Lord, bitch. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they have to add the three-legged puppy cancer or there will be no sympathy in their audience. <laughs> and can we talk about how this Mary character that we are just now meeting wants her kid to die because she comes in and she sneaks in. As you say, it keeps getting worse and worse. She says, yeah, kid's sick. And we need this car to take him to his appointments yeah. to get our kit for our sick kid. Anyway, here is the car. <laughs> I'm, giving it back. I'm not, I'm not stopping paying and waiting for you to come pry it from my kid's <laughs> dead hands. Cause I need it to transport my dying kid. I don't know if I mentioned I have a dying kid. Yeah, I'm just going to give it to you because I don't really want my kid to live. I'd rather have to stop, you know, driving back and forth. It's a, it's a lot of miles because these payments are a real bitch. I, you know, yeah. they, I didn't think about the insurance, too, when I made yeah. when I agreed Look, to this. Dead thing. kid is one thing. Welcher is another. No one's going to call me a Welcher. <laughs> also, and this is where he says, and we all know what's going to happen. He's going to say, here, you can have the car for free. I'm a Christian. But he says a sentence here so baffling that I paused the movie <laughs> and truly thought about it for five minutes. He says, you've been one of my best customers. Yeah. <laughs> no. When you own a used car lot, that can only mean they come in and buy a car like once a week, right? <laughs> and he gouges her every time. Yeah, right. Like right. Every time he's gouged You'd her. never check the Kelly Blue Book value. You're my best customer. <laughs> Uh, so yeah so he's like you can you can have the car and his son is super impressed we get that from context clues not from his <laughs> face the camera zooms in like to, like as if to go hey, you want to go for a, an emotion now no smile all right smile. Never, <laughs> never mind you you do you Kid is staring at her like he's trying to blow her head up with his telekinesis <laughs> <laughs> And uh, for the last hour of this film, by the way, this was the somebody fell asleep on the Yamaha synth keyboard. Two notes. Yeah. For the oh rest, my the God. rest of the movie. I thought I, 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 God. I actually thought I had tintinitis at one point. Like I took off my headphones and I was yeah. like, oh, my tint I got to tap on my like, head. Uh, and I was like, uh, <laughs> no, ah, uh, uh, uh. ah. You're like, Hun, can you hear that? Ah, uh, can you hear that? Oh, uh. Making all these weird noises. All right, so now, so now he's back at home being a good husband. We have this pointless and long diversion about credit card offers. Uh, I will, I would absolutely <laughs> refuse this scene. <laughs> Just like psh, junk mail, am I right? Psh. Spam calls and junk mail. Am I? I was just like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, what? I thought they were building to like. Does God have a credit card offer for you? Like, is it like the whole? You know that parable but they're not when they're like, oh, to uh, anything. they're like, God will save me. And then, the, you know, the guy in the boat comes, he's like, get in my boat. And he's like, no, God will save me. And the whole punchline is like, he dies. And then God is like, hey, I sent you a guy in a boat. Like, is it that kind of thing? Like, <laughs> yeah, I sent I you this no interest credit card offer with great points, by the way, and a bonus <laughs> sign on. Like, is that cash back? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's just there for nothing. It's nope. absolutely nothing. No point at all. Yeah. And his wife says, how do you feel? She, he says, well, what do you call it when your life's turning upside down, but you still feel like God's in control? And I like, uh. I wrote, oh, a, a dangerous delusion. I know this one. I know this <laughs> yeah, one. I, I had the exact same note, except fucking psychotic. You yeah. <laughs> Nut job. That's what I had. <laughs> and this is where this is yet another scene. I know I've, met, I've, I've, I've alluded to the microphone situation, but this is the scene that really drives it home. Here's the thing. They are shooting this on your camcorder that your parents had in the 80s or something. Yep. Yeah. And 
they only have that on board fucking mic. Yep. And, and it's always usually pointed out the, the star, you know, the <laughs> J. And so he'll come in like loud and basically like, oh, like right on the mic. And then the wife will be like, yeah, what do you think? <laughs> and like, that's the sound for the whole yes. film. Mm hmm. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. So, so he sits down to watch some TV. And I thought for a minute that we were going for the whole like, oh, now he's a Christian so he can sit in a chair like a human would. But later on, we see him shooting for an ottoman and missing. So it, that wasn't it. And this is where we get the like the TV's going to solve your problem kind of thing or whatever. Yes. And uh-huh. so like, I'm gearing up for it. And the first thing it says is like the latest craze in weight loss. And <laughs> it's like eating used cars or something. I was, <laughs> like, I was trying to get to there. Firing your fat employees. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, it, but but no, the, the he flips around to the news and the news is like, in our lead story, the act three turn, you know. <laughs> so it turns out that the, that the news just, you know, the news has done a secret camera sting operation at six random Used car lots all over Albany, Georgia. No, 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 no. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I I have to write this down in the country. Yes, yep. right. Yeah, it was said, the national they, they, fucking. They news. overshot this so hard. This would be a stretch for your local <laughs> small town shit news crew. Like this would be still a stretch. You'd be like, all right, I'm gonna use car. come on. But no, we're supposed to believe that Tom Jennings, who's get like the major national fucking sixty minutes. Yeah, like ABC is. News did this. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> he says in quotes: six used car lots picked at random in the United States. At random, I hope they went to like Alaska. You know, like, <laughs> they got one like way out so, there. Fuck! Why so did we commit to random? Yeah, so they start talking about how, yeah, everybody was a real piece of shit except for this guy from this movie who was a true Christian. And I'm like, okay, good. Then the movie's over. Are there 29 minutes yeah. of credits or something? Uh, and I love to, in the build up to it, they build it up like the used car industry is, it's just, and they, they make it out. And I'm like, this kind of contradicts the whole film because. They make it out like everyone is just a fucking oil baron from a cartoon. Like any right. yeah. used car salesman is just, they got their, they're on a mountain of treasure. And this fucking <laughs> moron was just in debt, couldn't even keep up with his payments when he was ripping people off. Right. Uh, right. Well, yeah. And then that's kind of what they're saying here is like, yeah. So what he was doing was really just the industry standard. Anyway. Yeah. But damn it, if he wasn't the only honest one. So now he goes to work the next day and the car. Well, the what it said in the script is the lot is filled with people ready to buy cars. <laughs> My God, there are tens of people at his well, used car. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. And also one more quick note on the behind the scenes. It turns out, again, the guy that they hired for six weeks oh, yeah, that yeah. was the mm. undercover investigator. We kind of I mean, you all knew that, but just in case. And I love it, too, because they show the, like, we live in an alternate universe in this movie where you don't need anyone's permission to put them on your fucking news show. So they just went undercover, exposed, doxed this guy, you know, like all these people show their faces. And I love it, too, because we see the scenes with, you know, with Jay, our intrepid hero. And I was like, I see, I remember this scene. I was there and there wasn't a camera. So how, how do you now right. have a right. hidden camera? Oh, we hit really a camera sense. in front of him. Off to the side. Yeah, it was weird. It was kind of a weird hide. <laughs> the hiding the the hidden camera was like the dude employee was holding a selfie stick like to it, but it was four feet to his right. You know, so Jay yeah. was so stupid he didn't like ever ask what that was about. I don't. It makes no sense. Yeah, so he shows up to the to the lot the next day, and everybody's just slept in line to buy a car from him, right? And oh, so <laughs> there's a moment like, so he calls his wife and he's like, hey, I need you to come help me sell cars. And she screams so much louder oh than the goddamn God. microphone can handle. Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> there, are, <laughs> there is so much peaking in this film. Oh. <laughs> and they just leave it. It's fine. Yep. They, she don't, they don't give a fuck. Yeah. And again, so like to bring back that she's one of the kids thing that you were talking about. He's telling his nine point seven month pregnant wife, you're going to come here and spend the entire day on your feet selling cars for me. Yeah. Fuck you. And this is where I I'm a little thick because I still was like, I think I caught that she was pregnant. But I was like, are is it supposed to be a secret? Because like 
In one scene, she was holding a pillow in front of her stomach. So I, I still don't know, in my mind, is this just Christian movie? They cast someone who was pregnant and she's kind of just whatever, like forget about it kind of thing. And so then, like now we've revealed that she's pregnant because we get a full shot where even I am like, okay, the character is fucking, this is not whatever. <laughs> and so I, at this moment, I'm like, We've gone through this whole thing and no part of this conflict was ever, I'm not sure I want to have a child with you anymore. You know, like her, her, her husband is abusing her. Mm -hmm. He's a piece of shit. They don't get along at all. And this whole time she was pregnant with another kid. Well, and oh. also he's about to lose his fucking job. His, his business yeah. is about to go under and he's got a new kid on the way. Yeah. Never brought up. Nope. Yeah. The wife was, he was, that could have been his defense. Uh, we have enough. I don't know if you noticed this, but you're 80 months pregnant. <laughs> you want me to, st to turn down free money mm -hmm. in my business. And also, by the way, to donate it to the fucking mega church. And we're about to have another kid. That's what you want me to do. Yeah. He was never part of the discussion. It's so fucking insane. And so, and, all right, and by the way, we get the like car selling montage now, where they're selling up the cars this to all the of the best. tens of people. It goes on for so goddamn long. It goes on for so long, and nobody knows anything about cars. So it's just like a shot, a two shot, and the guy's like, "So this is a car? Yes, this is a car. <laughs> I'll take it." Does it go vroom vroom vroom? Yep. All right, so the, the, eventually this goddamn montage ends, and we cut to the wife, like, tallying up all the money they made that day, and she says, and I quote, we made $38,400 today, and that's after subtracting out the cost of the cars. I'm like, well, I <laughs> fucking hope so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, by the way, that means that you have way more than that in your account. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. Your profit might have been thirty eight thousand, but that means your bank account is just fucking what? Like, what's the ratio? It'd be like two hundred thousand dollars at least. Well, I guess because yeah. they're only making fifteen hundred bucks a car at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I get, and I don't know too. It's confusing because I get, do they do a payment plan for everybody? So maybe then they just have like the down payment. But she says we made that amount, and that amount becomes the amount they have later. So like, what the f nobody. Anyway, it best makes worst, no fucking not sense. Not knowing yeah. how any business works. Yeah, exactly. But so the banker shows up to get all of the shit, right? And he's like, hey, where are all the cars? And he's like, here's your money. He's like, but what happened to the cars? He's like, where the fuck do you think? Do you think I just blew this many people out back? <laughs> Dumbass. So the banker comes who we've covered is in charge of this guy's entire existence. <laughs> yes, exactly. And he exactly. gives him a check. So you've already got the money in your account somehow. Like you, but, and you know that this guy is in charge of your checking. He literally tells you how much is in your checking account. I'm pretty sure you could just be like, yeah, take the money. Like, do a bank thingy and the money's yours. I'm sorry, man. Did you just give me a UOU? What the hell is this? <laughs> yeah. To be fair, he did show up to repossess a car lot by himself yes. with nothing. <laughs> Like, like he was just going to pull a laundry basket out of the back and be like, please put all the keys to all the cars in here. I have a lot of driving to do tonight. He's like, well, I have this one banker's box. Um, put the cars in it, I guess. Can you just take, put them all in. All right. So, yeah. So now his car lot is saved. Hooray. And we see all yeah. the news is just about nothing but how honest he was. Right. Mm hmm. Which also somehow created a market that wasn't, you know what I mean? Like everybody woke up that day and is like, that guy's so honest that I now need a used car. I yeah, need somehow. a car. Yeah. Right. I want to buy three cars from him. Yeah. Here in Albany, Georgia, you know, I was sitting around and I was thinking, I'm going to buy a car as soon as a national news program tells me who the only honest used car salesman yeah. in America is. That's when I'll make my buying decision. The next morning. Like yes. That, like, wake up. Like, I saw the news. Cancel it. Honey, cancel everything. We have to go buy a car. <laughs> How are we getting there if we don't have a car? I don't know. We need a car so badly, but we have a car. To get there, uh, it's whatever. We did just need it. All right. So, yeah. And, of course, we're sitting there thinking, like, how the fuck can there possibly be 20 minutes of movie left, right? That's when the wife is like, hey, you know, I was just thinking, we've still got 20 minutes of runtime. What if we just paid back all the people that you ripped off before the act two turn? Yeah. I, written my, I wrote in my notes, you know, the only thing dumber than cutting a commission job out to what you think is fair to be paid 
giving everyone back the money from when you weren't doing that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, and it turns out that they have just exactly as much money as they would need to pay all those people back. It's thirty. It comes to $39,000 over like a five-year period. So it's like, well, it's not much then. No, well, I think he said two years. It oh, still okay. Seems, right. It still seems like nothing, though. Like, what is this business model? Yeah, he sold three cars a year. Oh, okay. Well, in that case, <laughs> yeah. No wonder he couldn't make rent. I, I <laughs> you would think God would just be like, I'm trying to tell you you shouldn't be in this stupid business. <laughs> business, business. So The numbers don't work, work. All right, so so he sets out to atone for all the car selling sins of his past, and and we get several of these. We get like three or four of these, like him showing up to give him the money. But the first one is amazing because he co shows up. He rings this chick's doorbell. She comes to the door. He's like, "Hi, I sold you a car about a year ago," and she's like, "Yeah, I remember." Like a fucking course you remember. <laughs> I, you, you buy so goddamn many cars that you wouldn't remember the one you yeah. bought last year? <laughs> Is yeah, that how that got in my driveway? Well, fucking yes, you remember. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, anyway, I overcharged you. Here's $1,500. You're black. <laughs> 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 well, it turns out, darn it, she just really needed that money right then because her husband just lost a, his job and her three-legged puppy just got cancer. So, yeah, I know we get a montage of every customer being like, "You are the, you are my savior. You're the best." Which tells me these cars must have been fine. Like none of them ever complained. Nope, and none of them were ever like, "Oh, whatever." And also, I wanted somewhere in the montage to be like one one customer is just totally blowing him after he gives. <laughs> 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 they're so happy, like they're. they're I mean, it's Georgia, so I guess yeah, yeah. you get a thousand dollars and your life is now changed. Yeah, it's you quite, can leave. Quite, quite a difference. <laughs> so, and, and then of course, like some of them, the people that he gives money back to scream louder than the mics can handle. Again, yep, yep. Oh. You hear that plasticky sound of the like the onboard camcorder mic just maxing out like oh, God, yeah please. yeah no it's wax paper through the fucking teeth of a comb yes exactly <laughs> we also have this great moment at the end of this montage where it's like they're supposed to be like the trashy couple and they're just like why are you doing this this is stupid and he's like well I'm good with Jesus now and they're like yeah yeah it sounds great why are you giving away free money to people that doesn't make any sense Anyways, we're gonna have a fight about bean dip because we're supposed to be comedic, but yeah, right. You're it's, dumb. The, the, our jokes will imply that this is an abusive relationship that we have here, but it's it's okay because it's for funny. And, yeah, and again, abusive over bean dip. <laughs> <laughs> Every day they have the same argument: who's making today's bean dip for night lunch? <laughs> so, that's uh, that's how it goes in this town. I also wanted one, just the wife of Jay, who whatever her name is. She should have snuck in there somewhere that part of the getting right with God is like, yeah, just one more step. You just have to shave that stupid ass fucking goatee. That's oh, the God. One. It says here in Psalms 5, <laughs> don't right? have that goatee. Yeah. I don't have the roast vocabulary to make fun of that goatee properly, but it is just horrible. It is just the stupidest looking thing. If you have that facial hair, I just shave it. Just shave it. I'm sorry. It's not anything is better than that. <laughs> Even by 2003 standards, it was pretty bad. Yeah. Okay. So, so he calls his wife. Atheist programming, guys. Let's let's be aware who our target audience yeah, is. Yeah. Okay? No, I was. Don't worry. I'm going to cut it out before we go. <laughs> let's, let's not just attack people for their goatees. Some people look awesome <laughs> when they wear goatees. Some of us just had a kid, Thomas. Fucking relax. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But his precise goatee is like he it it looks like the result of a really bad rim job. I don't it's it's just <laughs> it's awful. A really, or a really good rim job. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You, you, <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's in the eye of the beholder. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So quick before we hit a brown eye of the beholder joke, I'm gonna move on. Yeah. So he calls his wife to tell her how easy it is to give people money. He thought that would be harder. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, but she tells him he's being prideful. So we have to see the scene where he pays for his pridefulness with racist stereotypes. Oh man! Okay, old old yelling black lady and her hype mother. She has a hype man <laughs> yes. in the form yeah. of a yeah. mother. She's just like, you know, come here and give me under. And her mom's just mm -hmm. in the back, like, uh -huh. yeah. mm -hmm. it is. For, it's not just a hate crime. Oh, Lord. It's like a hate crime from a different universe where they have extra stereotypes about people <laughs> of color. 
It's Rick and Morty. They went to the hate crime dimension. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah, they really did for this scene. They're like, how much racism do you think we could squeeze into 41 seconds? Do you think we can right. set a record? Like, do you think, oh. get, let's get the Guinness people out. <laughs> we got their motorcycle couple <laughs> on the film. Let's also see how many stereotypes we can get into 41 seconds. All right. So we head back to the used car lot and the news shows up and they're like, hey, um, we would like to interview you about the thing everyone's interviewed you about uh, tomorrow at five o'clock. And he says, OK. And then we immediately cut to tomorrow at five o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, why? Just say you're doing it now. Yeah, Good right. Yeah. I, it's so fucking <laughs> stupid. So the news has decided, though, that they want to interview him next to this loud, busy road instead of inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the news crew has a microphone so they know what a microphone is like i'm just i want to know how this that i wonder if they got all the way to this part in the movie and then whoever you know how if they hired to do the news crew like had a mic they're like have you had that the whole time yeah i was just gonna use it for the news crew scene god fucking damn it we've been using this onboard mic <laughs> so yeah so they're interviewing him about the honesty that that is national news and whatnot, but darn it if Tweedledee hasn't sold them out. They're like, you know, the news said that you were super honest, but we talked to a guy who said you weren't honest. Let's go to the clip, right? And so we cut to Tweedledee, and he's like, he's not honest. They go to a clip in the movie. Yep. Which is, I wanted him, I wanted them to like, sure to be like, let's go to the clip, and then he's just like, there's no TV here. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I what, are, what are you going to? <laughs> She's like, no, we're going to watch the pavement. And there's a <laughs> imagine what the clip would be like. And imagine it's really incriminating, by the way. It's a real gotcha. She starts she starts doodly doing. <laughs> doodly, doodly, doodly. <laughs> she like acts it out <laughs> or something. All right. So, yeah. So the, she, she's like, she's like, so were you really uh, honest or are you a lying, cheating, filthy bastard? Like he said. And he's like, well, a little of both. And she's like, well, there you have it. The entire world sure is invested in the integrity of <laughs> Albany, Georgia's local used car salesman. This has been the news. Some right? couple <laughs> without a car has been walking there since yesterday when they watched the evening news. <laughs> Honey, turn the fuck around. God damn it. We, fuck it, we messed up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So everybody starts praying, right? So Alex Kendrick turns to his his uh, head to the sky and he says, God, Noah has shit to do. Let's wrap this up in eight to ten. Can we, if, we, if you don't mind? Yeah, he starts praying and his wife is like, it's because you didn't shave your stupid goatee. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so everybody prays for him. And then just as the reporter lady's getting back into her car, the old racist stereotype lady from a few scenes ago shows up to set her straight. <laughs> she explains that, yes, he ripped her off a bunch of people, but then he went and paid them back off. Haven't you even been watching the last few scenes? Excuse me, Miss Vale. I was watching the news as I do all the time. <laughs> and I noticed that you were in the middle of reporting something live. I instantly transported myself here <laughs> using my exactly. fucking daredevil power. What's that mutant called? The fucking one who was played by Alan Cumming. You know the one, the poof. I bamfed over here <laughs> in a cloud of sulfur. And I'm here to tell you. Well, that and you not only her, everyone who he gave money back in, they person. live like all within one block of his used car. And they all were watching the news. <laughs> yes. All of them, they weren't at work. They weren't doing, no. they were all watching the news. And instant Willie were like, we have to get walk over, I think, to yep. the car sales lot. Because naturally, this would still be shooting. It's not as though like this was a canned segment that they brought, you know, like they nope. recorded and broadcast. No, nope. we're all going over right away. It was live. To set the news straight. Well, and so, yeah, they all explain that to her. And she's like, well, fuck it. I guess we're just going to have to go live again in the middle of goddamn Wheel of Fortune. Or <laughs> <laughs> we got We got to fix this, man. We've told literally dozens of people here in Albany, Georgia. <laughs> I uh, I just want to watch this news day. Hello and good evening. I'm Tom Stevenson. Tragedy tonight as the Hartford Fire claims another 200 acres of wildland killing three people and injuring... Sorry, Tom, I've got breaking news. It turns out that guy from that news story might not be honest and awesome after all. Back to you. Sorry, who? You know, the news, the, the other news story about the honest car salesman. 
that everyone watched. So uh, I was just breaking in to tell you that might not have been true. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jeff. As I was saying, um, killing three and injuring 12. Authority. Sorry, are- Tom. Breaking back in again. Breaking, breaking news. The guy who told me the true guy was a liar is a liar, and he actually gave the money back. Is this still about the car salesman? Yes. Yes, Tom. Don't worry. He is still honest, and he's having a baby. Damn, we really need some more news around here. Breaking in, Tom. I just farted. Okay. It had to be like that, though, <laughs> right? Like, you would imagine that they came in later and said, uh, just, uh, just uh, the 11 o'clock news, we just wanted to update you. Um, the used car lot is closed now. And they don't, <laughs> they don't stay now. open this late at night. Anyway, back we, to you, we Tom. We went for tacos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I love too, like when they did this whole montage was they all the whole family like prayed to make this happen kind mm-hmm. of thing, you know? Yeah. But they all got in their weird doggy style, take it in the butt from God position. Yep. <laughs> you know, all threw it back for God. The whole family. I guess God is an ass man, plain and simple. Cause yeah. the whole family is like, all right, we know what we have to do. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So, yeah, so the news lady gets back on the news and she's like, turns out there's another side to the other side of this story of our used car salesman protagonist that the fat guy from earlier is a lying motherfucking fuck. Fuck him. Yeah. Back to you, Dave. But a bunch of the viewers are like, can I get the weather for tomorrow? Like, not, I don't. And it's actually dumber than that. Because oh, it the is, wife- isn't it? The wife goes into labor, so she's like, it turns out the news we news you earlier isn't news at all. And his wife's going into labor. <laughs> Why the fuck would you tell us that? Bunch of viewers are like, this really doesn't affect you if you're not buying a used car right now. Like, I don't, what, What's the market on this? I should leave this city. <laughs> Are they going to put the game on or what? (laughs) Interrupted the Simpsons for this. (laughs) All right. So, yeah. So now he has a baby that he's not going to hate until she's eight years old. Apparently her name is Faith. (laughs) Oh, Alex Kendrick holding this baby is so because he has no idea how to hold a baby. Right. He's obviously never interacted with his children at this age. He he met them on their 13th birthday. Right. So he's just like, (laughs) oh, baby, you're so tall. (laughs) (laughs) Baby. All right. So we have to wrap this up somehow. So he hands the baby off to his wife and he's got to go be uh, he's got to go to his kid's school for something. Yeah. Dressed as a traffic cone, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And wouldn't you know it, he just happens upon his son doing a my dad is my hero report. I mean, (laughs) he finishes it and I really wanted the teacher to be like, you were supposed to do a book report on where the red fern grows. (laughs) (laughs) You get an F again, Todd. You get an F again. I'm going to have to fail you. Yeah, you're (laughs) going to be repeating the second grade until we get this right. So yeah, so he, uh, yeah, so he sh- shows up and he hears this kid talk about how his dad is super honest and he wants to be just like him when he grows up. And then it turns out that we find out that he's checked his son out of school just for the fuck of it mm-hmm. because he wants to ride around in the Triumph, which you can't do after three p.m. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> and he wants to, I think, to see the baby because if if you know anything about having babies, Eli, the the one thing you would want is another kid around Absolutely. to have to look at yeah. while you're dealing with a fucking newborn. Oh yeah, I would leave my kid in school until like nine at night. Like I'd just be like, <laughs> just stay, stay there. You send it to send it to Hogwarts. Yeah, <laughs> we got a really overzealous extra in the teacher, and she's just like. She's just fucking coming up with it because she goes, okay, we'll go with uh, uh, Bobby over here and Tom over here. And if time permits, we'll also end with Kate. And I love the idea that Kate also had a heartfelt thing about her dad that her dad was going to overhear. But time but like, wasn't. It was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of time and the dad's just standing out there like, oh, fuck. Oh, oh yeah, I gave my- up my drinking for nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Click. Pow. Oh, God. <laughs> So, yeah, so they get into the Triumph because apparently they did have permission to put one nineteenth of a mile on it and they get everything they can out of that. There are fucking helicopters shots, just crazy amount oh. of shit. Now, I should point out, this car is a 
goddamn death trap. Right. Well, that's what you can see the actors realize. Oh, right. Old cars sucked. <laughs> it's terrifying. It's this tiny little ass car that's made of paper mache. There are no seat belts in it. You're practically falling out of it just because it's so fucking small. Yeah, I don't even think there are doors. No, not really. <laughs> yeah, not, not like not functionally. I mean, there may have been something that opened and closed. But yeah, they're basically sitting on top of this tiny little fucking car. Don't get me wrong. It's fucking <laughs> awesome. I would love to own that car, but there's no way I'd put a goddamn seven-year-old in it. Yeah, and a bunch of bolts are just coming out the back. Like, <laughs> yeah. Fucking old, what's his name? Didn't tighten the bolts. Oh, he, didn't he, tighten all. he didn't tighten all the old ones. He loosened. So, <laughs> all right, so now, and, and that's it, the movie ends. So the moral of this story is to just not worry about your bills and trust God to take care of it, right? Mm -hmm. That was... Yep, just throw it back for God and he'll make your used car business a success. Yeah, he'll come do like an audit of your business <laughs> number. I don't, yeah. I don't Apparently. Know. All right, well, Thomas, I, I say this a lot because it's true. I can't thank you enough for watching this piece of shit. If you don't mind, can you remind our audience one more time where they would have to go? They wanted to hear more from you. Hey, listen to opening arguments, listen to serious inquiries only, philosophers in space and comedy shoeshine are my podcast. Yeah, it's a dark time and, uh, you know, opening arguments is a dark show, but it's also equipping everybody to deal with uh, with the facts on the ground. So go check it out. Yep. And and I'm glad to see that I, I left out the obligatory always forget one of your shows when I have you on thing when I introduce you. <laughs> Easy to do. So All right. So and also, by the way, check the uh, show notes. Of course, we'll have all of those shows linked on the show notes. And well, that's going to do it for our review of Flywheel. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to entice you with promises we may or may not deliver on given Eli's recent history. Eli, tell us. What's on deck, at least for now? Okay, now we're going to do the Omega Code 2. I'm for, sorry, when, when for real Plandemic okay. comes out and then yeah, Keith no, has a birthday, Omega Code 2. You, no way you could have seen that birthday coming. It was a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 263 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Thomas Smith for hanging out with us today and for watching the movie and recording the episode with us for nothing but the reward of listening to me recite the outro again which he loves and perhaps even a huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go if you'd like to count yourself among the ranks you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad free version of every episode you can also help a ton by leaving a five star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms and if you enjoyed this show be sure to check out our sibling shows the scathing atheist citation data D&D minus and the skeptocrat available wherever podcasts live if you have questions comments or cinematic suggestions you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres Tim Robinson takes care of our social media our theme song was written and performed by Rise Slot to give people drafts on Mars, although the music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Every single star of this movie about how you should be more ethical in business is now a Trump supporter. <laughs> <laughs> Statistically speaking, at least one of the extras in this movie died of COVID-19. The Kendrick brothers owe me a check for about 11.2 million more dollars than they should have made off the movies. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me up, Kendrick Brothers. Hit me up. Oh, I want to thank you for that, Thomas, by the way, because mine was going to be depressing until you pointed out they were all Trump supporters. But there you now, go. Yeah, know, it's, it's absolutely true. No, Yo, you're right. This whole fucking absolutely. movie about, like, oh, oh, the Lord God, Jesus, got to be ethical in your bit. I guarantee you they're fucking Trump supporters. Yep, of course right they now. are. Absolutely. God. I'm so fucking lovely. There. Except the token black guy. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.